Today, I'm going to teach you what settings to use whilst filming and what each of those settings do. Hi, I'm Dan, I run Volker Media. I'm a content creator for bands and musicians and today I'm going to teach you about the right settings to use whilst filming, the rules and what those settings do and also when you can break those rules. So the first thing to talk about is frames per second or FPS. The best way to understand frames per second is if you think about a flick book where you used to draw a little character or a little animation on each piece of paper and then you'd flick through it. The more amount of frames you have in that flick book, the more amount of detail you're going to capture. And the same applies for cameras. It is how many images you are capturing within that one second of footage. The standard for filming is 24 frames a second or 23.976. I won't get into the intricate details of the differences between them right now, but the reason why they are the standard is that it is the minimum frames per second where your eyes naturally see motion. So if you move your hands in front of your eyes like that and you can see natural motion blur and that's why we shoot at 24. Now 24 frames a second is the standard for normal speed filming. There are now higher frame rates that you can shoot at for slow motion. So you have things such as 60 frames a second which is what I tend to use if I want to film a slow motion sequence or you can go 120 frames a second on some cameras and way higher than that on a lot more of the higher end cameras. Basically what these are doing is they are capturing more frames within that second so that you can slow them down and the quality of each still is really sharp. So capturing in a higher frame rate means you are capturing more still images within that second so you can slow them down. Now you might wonder why wouldn't you shoot everything at 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second so that you can have the option to slow things down if you want to. Well the reason is because you're shooting at such a higher frame rate you're capturing a lot more sharper images so technically the image quality is going to be a lot better but the problem is is that it doesn't look very natural to the human eye because you're not getting that natural motion blur that I was talking about before. So generally you want to plan for slow motion shots. If you know something with a lot of movement is coming up you want to switch over to 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second whatever it is that you use for slow motion. The second thing and it works hand in hand with frames per second is your shutter speed. So your shutter speed basically means how long your shutter will be open to let in a certain amount of light and it kind of does a similar thing to the frames per second where it deals with how sharp the image is and how much motion blur you get in that so you'll see a lot of long exposure photographs where you see the car lights kind of tailing about and on bonfire night when people use sparklers and write their names and take photos of it that is a long exposure which requires a slower shutter speed and for sports in photography you would use a faster shutter speed because you want to freeze that frame as much as you can and capture as much of that detail as you possibly can because you don't want much motion blur. So there is a thing called the 180 degree shutter rule which means that you want your shutter speed to be double the amount of your frames per second and that will capture the most natural motion blur for your footage. If you're filming at 24 frames a second you ideally want your shutter speed to be 1 over 48 or if your camera doesn't allow over 1 over 48 usually it will allow 1 over 50 and the same stands for a faster frame rate so if you're shooting at 60 frames a second you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 120 or 120th of a second that is double the amount of the frame rate that you are shooting at and that will give you the most natural motion blur now there are a few times where you can break this rule like sometimes if you're shooting in a location and the light is flickering on the image so you can adjust that shutter speed ever so slightly around until you see that flickering stop. This usually happens
happens with different LED lights. So you can adjust slightly your shutter speed and that should get rid of that issue. Now you can also get stylistic. I have shot before where you can slow the shutter speed down and it will open the shutter for longer. So creating more motion blur. You can also crank that shutter speed and it will create much sharper frames. So even though there are rules there, so the 180 degree shutter speed, they can be broken. It depends on your stylistic choice and if you need to eliminate flicker in your videos. The third thing is white balance. Now white balance is really important for getting your colors right. So white balance is making sure that your whites are white. You're basically taking that white point and making sure that is as white as it can be. It saves a lot of time in post-production when you're color grading and you can make sure that if you're shooting outside or indoors or wherever with different lighting that all of your footage will fit together nicely color wise and color correcting and grading will be so much easier for you when you get into post. Now I used to use auto white balance a lot when I was starting off and it's okay to use that if you're in a pinch and you need to set up quickly but the best thing to do is actually set up your white balance before you take your shots. When we talk about white balance we need to talk about the light color temperature and and that's measured in Kelvin. You'll see in your white balance settings that you will have different amounts of numbers followed by the letter K. Now the letter K stands for Kelvin. And this is talking about the temperature of your lighting situation. So generally, if you're shooting outside in the sun, you want to be around about 5,500 K or 5,500 Kelvin. And you want to shoot at that because that is the temperature of the sun. Now, if you're shooting indoors, nine times out of 10, you're going to be shooting in tungsten lighting. And a tungsten bulb is generally rated at 3,200 Kelvin. Now, if you have the wrong white balance settings for these, you will notice yourself either being very orange or very blue. So you want to make sure that you get this right and it will save you a lot of work in post-production. Cameras also do have settings that are already set to 3200K or 5500K for tungsten and daylight and all in between as well. And they're usually indicated by a little bulb for tungsten or a sun for daylight. So if you haven't got time to actually dial in your white balance, then you can just click on one of them depending on what situation you're in. And generally you'll be in the right ballpark. So next, let's talk about aperture or f-stops. This is a lens thing, more of a camera setting. If you're not using a manual lens, then you will be adjusting the settings in camera. What aperture is, is how much light you are allowing through the lens. And it's done by adjusting a series of blades that are inside the lens. So when you're buying a lens or looking at a lens, it will say an f-stop on it, which would be like f1.8 or f 2.8. This basically means that that is its maximum aperture. That is the widest you can possibly go and the most amount of light that can be let in with that. Now the wider aperture that you have or the wider f-stop that you have, say f1.8, f1.4, the shallower depth of field you will get. So you will get this nice blurry background like you've got here. Or if you close that f-stop down, then you will be getting a lot more of your frame in focus. Now if you shoot at a wider aperture like f1.8 or f2.8, then that that is going to change how much is in focus. So if you shoot at f1.8, your focusing point is going to be very, very small. But if you shoot at say f4, then your focus point is going to be a lot wider. So it kind of depends what look you're trying to go for. There's no actual go-to setting for your f-stop. It just depends on what lens you're using and what look you're going for. Now, the last setting to talk about is your ISO. Your ISO basically increases the sensitivity of your sensor to light, so it can allow more light or make your image darker. And you really want to get this right. You might think you can crank that ISO up to the highest number because you're getting more light in and you can shoot with whatever then. But the higher you go in your ISO, so the grainier and more noise you'll get in your image. Some cameras deal with this noise at higher ISOs better than others, but the best thing to do really is to test your camera. Do a lot of test shots and see whereabouts you get to with the ISO where you start seeing this noticeable noise. There are also tools out there like plugins which you can use to denoise your footage, but really you're better off shooting at a lowest ISO that you can do to get the cleanest quality of image that you can possibly get. If you got some value from this video, I'd really appreciate appreciate it if you left a like and a comment it really helps with these videos and if you're interested in learning more and seeing more videos like this then please subscribe and hit the notification bell
Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.